seek the tomb where Jesus lay. Alleluia, alleluia.
Don't know how long the diocese at this point is saying offices are closed until after the first Sunday of May. But <clears throat> that's what we're about, to pray for an end of this crisis, pray for a vaccine that could help us to be safer and to help us to know what decisions to make, but most importantly, to help us know that we are in solidarity with one another, not just in confinement, but in the faith that we profess. That gospel again speaks of mercy, and so it always has a high profile moment in our masses when we say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive any sin, and bring us to everlasting life. <clears throat> Let's recite that great hymn of praise to the Trinity <clears throat> that was suppressed all during Lent, but which we now <clears throat> restore to our liturgy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now, let us pray. O God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Easter feast, Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit as God forever and ever. Amen. Now let's be seated for the reading. The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
These are the ones that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Well, I always read this gospel with a, with a fair amount of enthusiasm. And, uh, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll do the punchline again for you. You've already heard it three times. Blessed are those who have not seen but have believed. You heard it in the gospel acclamation. You heard it in the gospel itself. And you heard it in the, the little hymn that we started with. Blessed are those who have not seen but have believed. <clears throat> I have no doubt that Jesus is talking about us when he gives that message to Thomas, but to the other apostles too. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of reasons why this gospel is just such a strong favorite of mine, and, and it goes back really far. Uh, from the time I was a freshman in high school, the chapel where I attended mass every day throughout high school and two years of college <clears throat> had that image of Jesus' bare chest with a gash in his side and his hands you know, stretched out like that with the nail marks. And this doubting Thomas, you know, reaching up and putting his hands there this, this very scene captured first in a painting that uh, was at the seminary in Louisville and then when our chapel was um, actually re redone when they, they, they made the chapel into an auditorium built another uh, separate entire wing for the new chapel and they reproduced that scene in a mosaic you know, mosaics, the little, you know, postage stamp size squares of color. But uh, anyway, so the two years of college, uh, <clears throat> we were we were there in, in, uh, in the chapel there singing in mosaic. And then roll the tape forward about 10 more years, and by this time, <clears throat> uh, I'm a priest and a brand new pastor at St. Thomas in Bardstown. And I thought back to that painting. And in fact, a parishioner there, I love to tell this story, a parishioner there had a picture of St. Thomas Church Sanctuary from about 1940. Well, our seminary in Louisville was built in 1952. 1940, here was this painting hanging on the wall at St. Thomas Church. Well, by this time, it was 1982, and St. Thomas Seminary in Louisville was gone. And I decided to make it my business to find out where that painting was and to bring it home. I did exactly that. <laughs> I'm tackling it a little bit because at that time, Bishop Maloney was responsible for those kinds of things, and he was a, a, a tough negotiator, shall we say. But my ace in the hole was the picture of that guy's first communion from about 1935 or 40. And I said, that's where that painting belongs, and he agreed. And so the painting is now hanging again in the church of St. Thomas in Bardstown, and I always uh, tell that story whenever I show people on our history tours about that. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, far more than my, you know, mere reminiscences is the power of that line where Jesus is saying, you know, you believe because you've seen. Blessed are those who haven't seen and yet have believed. And I always say he's talking about us. <clears throat> but that was a pretty important message, too, for the people in the early days of the church, and that's what we're seeing in the readings that Steve gave us, one from St. Peter and his first letter, he wrote two, 
And then the story that we had in the Acts of the Apostles. All of these Sundays of Easter, second, third, fourth, up to the seventh and beyond, we have messages from the Acts of the Apostles. And it's the picture of the early days of the church, the early days of the community of believers. It tells us in this little excerpt here, five verses only, that every day the Lord was adding to the number of those who believed. That was a struggle. It was a struggle for those folks to live in a depressed society, oppressed by their uh, former fellow Jews, and oppressed by the Romans, and trying to pass the message around. As we have me say many times before, 275 years it was the law of the land that anybody who expressed belief in Christ could be put to death. But here they are in their earliest days. I, uh, I have a movie that I like real well, and I use it in a class for uh, the New Testament. And uh, it basically tells the story of the early church and the crises and the, and the challenges they faced and how they spread the word around. It tells the story of the Acts of the Apostles, frankly. I mean, you can pick up your New Testament, read the Acts of the Apostles, and and, uh, and as I said, you're going to be hearing excerpts from Acts during these spring days, these spring Sundays. But it's a nice movie, and uh, I'm told that you can find it on the various uh, movie sources. But uh, simple title, capital A, capital D. And <clears throat> there are two versions of it, by the way. Uh, the one that I like, uh, is the one that stays really close to the Acts of the Apostles. Now, there's another one that's uh, promoted by the actress Roma Downey, gorgeous actress, you know her, Irish woman. She used to be uh, part of that series, uh, Touched by an Angel. Well, she's got a version that she produces. I don't care for that one quite as much as I like the other one. I guess I spent more time with it. But this one, A.D., stands for Anno Domini, Year of the Lord. You know, we use it as a measure of counting time, years since the time of Jesus. And the opening scene is taking the crosses down after the crucifixion. And then, pretty shortly after that, there's a scene that we'll be hearing on one of these Sundays after Easter, of the disciples walking the, on the way to Emmaus. And then this episode that we had today of Thomas being uh, obstinate and saying, I'm not going to believe until I see for myself. And then Jesus saying, put your money where your mouth is, bud. You know? and, 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 and by the way, in that movie, uh, Jesus has a great line that's not scriptural. But he says, <clears throat> I chose you, Thomas, because you were uh, a hard one to convince. But I knew that once I convinced you, you would be a good uh, messenger. Of course, he was. Thomas goes on to be one of the great apostles and <clears throat> spreads the, uh, the, the message of Christ to India, uh, especially Western India. It's Christian today because of the doubt of Thomas. But anyway, it's a good movie, and uh, I have a version, I mean, I have a, a copy of it, made by Paul from Florida, but I think you're also probably able to find it on the various movie outlets, uh, but just look for A.D., uh, and I, I think you'll find that a real good instruction. Uh, I've been asked to do more instruction, too, on uh, our uh, YouTube uh, productions, and I'm happy to do that. I'm thinking that I might take a, uh, a, a cue from the other aspect of this Sunday, the Divine Mercy Sunday. Jesus breathing, giving his spirit, you know the word from respiratory, highly conscious of that these days. But Jesus breathing his spirit on the apostles and saying, 
who sins you shall receive <coughs> whose sins you shall forgive they are forgiven whose sins you shall retain they are retained that's our belief our establishment of the sacrament of reconciliation Sacrament of mercy, call this Divine Mercy Sunday, precisely because of that gospel story. And then, <clears throat> what I call this, the other sacrament of weakness, anointing. You know that in the parishes, we do them quarterly, but we do them communally. The sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of anointing. And I don't always have time to, uh, in those liturgies, to give the theology background of those sacraments. So I'm thinking that this might be a good motivation to do a lesson on our uh, uh, YouTube uh, productions uh, about the sacraments of weakness. And I'm also thinking about getting back to the, uh, uh, the, the memoir uh, and the proofreading. So anyway, Karen, bless her heart, is continuing to faithfully record. I'll meet up with her afterwards and uh, see what uh, we can schedule as far as our company uh, uh, presentations by YouTube. Well, I'll have a little something else to say to you after communion, but let's go now to our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We are including our petitionary prayers in the Eucharistic prayer, so let me invite you to go ahead and be seated again. Phil's got a hymn for us, and I'll prepare the gifts of bread and wine, and we'll move to the uh, Barukah prayers <clears throat> that come from the uh, Passover meal. Phil? We did not have an offertory song. What would you like to do? Uh, well, I'd like to not do one. Okay. <laughs> I thought you had one scheduled just by laps. Uh, we're ready to do the Barukah prayers. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. And Barukah, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the offering which we present to you with humble and contrite hearts. Now pray, everybody, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. We pray the Lord gives his name. For our God is the good of all us all the earth. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people that renewed by profession of your name and by baptism we may attain unending happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Jesus, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, 
but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. So with Easter joy, we join the hymn of your praise along with the angels and saints of heaven as they acclaim In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we through the desire to be
be in communion with one another and with you. Remember, <clears throat> too, the faithful departed. Help us to know that they are not just numbers that we see on the news, but they are people who have <clears throat> fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. And all those whom we remember in our parishes who passed faith on to us, welcome them too in the light of your face and have mercy on us. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her husband Joseph, and other members of the early church, Mary, one of those who were, was at the empty tomb, Mary, one of those who was in the upper room when Jesus came after his resurrection. Those apostles, Thomas and the others, and then those to whom they passed on the faith down the years, Ambrose of Milan, Ignatius of Loyola, sponsor of this church, Clara of Assisi, and all those saints, with them may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. For it is through Jesus, with Jesus, and in Jesus, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
See, in December, priests fill out what's called a personnel profile, and it basically says, you know, like where I am, like to look for something different, need the mood to be closer to my aging parents, just a little profile, <clears throat> so that then the diocese and the personnel office can get an assessment of where personnel changes might need to happen. Then they research that more thoroughly in January and February. Well, in March, priests begin to make their choices. And uh, I emphasize that word choice because we have choice. And as much as 40 years ago, we had no choice, very little. So just about the time I got into the ministry, we began to have choice, and we have uh, much more choice now than we once did. Uh, and uh, so anyway, uh, I choose to stay right where I am. <laughs> the interesting thing about once you turn 70 is that the archbishop sends you an appointment letter, but for one year at a time. And uh, I sent you a letter, with members of St. Ambrose, St. Clair, St. Ignatius this past week, but I had not gotten my letter yet, so I didn't mention it. Uh, so you got a letter that tells you about a number of other things, but this is the letter that again appoints me for a new year uh, in the position that I've held now for uh, nearly four years. Came in uh, June of 2016, so I'll complete four years in June. The appointments uh, have for a long time taken effect the middle Wednesday of June. This year, uh, it's uh, gonna be a little bit different. Again, it's not gonna affect us at all, but because of the uh, 
circumstances, those priests that are moving uh, are going to have a bit more of a transition time. Basically, uh, as I say, they, they like to make the announcements and make them all together and make as many of them effective at the same time as they can. But uh, anyway, instead of appointments being effective the uh, middle Wednesday of June this year, they're effective the 5th of August. And uh, so that's when my uh, effect is, uh, my letter is effective. But nothing changes, the, the appointment is the same. And in other words, I'm continuing on last year's letter New Year's, the, the, the new letter kicks into effect the first week of August, as it will for other priests who are moving. Now, here's my favorite story of many stories throughout the year. When they tell us to begin thinking about where we might like to serve or what we might feel called to do, they being the personnel board, tell us that we can talk to a spiritual advisor about our discernment, but generally not to talk about the appointments, you know, so that there's not a lot of speculation and confusion, you know, and so we're not meant to talk about them. When I received the appointment to Hardin County in 2016, I had done my discernment, made my phone call to the director of priest personnel about 20 minutes after five on the day before they wanted to make all the announcements. Remember I said they want to make them at the same time? So they were going to do it electronically at like 11 o'clock the next day. And they had several to make in 2016. They had better than about two dozen appointments to make. And you know it's a puzzle. they got to fit the pieces in together. If this priest moves from here, then somebody from here has got to go there, and so on and so forth. Remember, they want you to keep that all confidential. I had to have been one of the last puzzle pieces to go in. I mean, you know, 69 years old at the time, the retired priests don't exactly have the priority uh, the younger priest who's going to a large parish with the school and so on and so forth. So anyway, I was one of the last ones they had to deal with. The last piece to put in the puzzle. And 20 minutes after 5, I say to the director of personnel, <clears throat> yes, let's make this appointment official. Less than 30 minutes later, I stopped in to the Nazareth nursing home run by the Sisters of Charity, right across from Bellarmine, Newburgh Road in Louisville. I wanted to tell my good buddy, Father Bill Martin, about the appointment. He and I always shared things pretty closely. Remember, legitimate to talk to your spiritual advisor about things. So I wanted to tell Father Bill Martin. <clears throat> As I walked into the lobby of the nursing home, Father Stanley Osborne was walking down the aisle with his walker, great big smile on his face, and he says, Hi, Ben, you're going to love it back in Arden County. How did he know? Well, that's Stanley Osborne for you. Many, if not most of you, know him and love him. So anyway, one of my favorite stories from the March Madness, the real March Madness. You're going to be hearing them. The priests are getting their letters and they're making their announcements this weekend. They'll be in the record probably, uh, I'm pretty sure this coming week. Uh, Karen and I will get together and talk about further tapings. Um, but uh, for the time being, we expect to be taping Sunday morning, 8 a.m. at St. Ambrose, 10 a.m. at St. Ignatius. And then the first Sunday of the month, we had 5.30 Mass at St. Clair and Colesburg. Um, I think that's all the news that's fit to print. Karen, can you think of anything I've forgotten? I think that's it. All right. Well, uh, Phil, oh, what's the, he, Phil is pointing out the white folks. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> uh, we're going to wrap, of 
course, with the blessing of the final hymn in about the next four minutes. It is now six minutes till 11. Uh, until noon, the church doors will be open and people are welcome to come into St. Ignatius and help themselves to the white books. Those are the little uh, five minutes a day prayer books. You have the black ones during Lent, and now the Easter season has the white ones. They're on the table right in the aisle. Come in the door, help yourself. Kneel down, say a prayer if you like, you're most welcome. Uh, people are also dropping off rice bowl contributions, tithing contributions. Those are here too. So uh, again, please uh, feel welcome to come for the next hour. We won't lock up until about noon here at St. Ignatius. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us all, remain with us this day, this Easter, this pandemic, and forever. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be God. Bill, are we going back to where we came in? Yes, 273, three, verses 1 and 9. 273, 1 and 9. Hallelujah, hallelujah.